Kanye delayed his album with Ty Dolla Sign again. But this is a good thing, and it's because Kanye has one thing that's been looming over him for the last few years. After following all the leaked information about Vultures online, as well as knowing where Kanye is at in the context of his own career, you'll see why Vultures is the most important album he'll ever make. Early on, it was easy to tell where everything was heading. Each album have a monumental impact on the industry. Even though some of the projects had different reactions from critics and fans, each held their own merit and built on his seemingly perfect discography. However, there was one moment where everything changed. He scrapped his album Yandi. <laughs> A seemingly perfect project that would not only have insane commercial success, but a cultural and industry impact that we'd still be seeing the results from. This is the moment that everything changed. Since this moment, it's been apparent that music isn't his primary focus. Music is fleeting. Ain't no 50 year old rock star that you care about. This is a young man's sport. Jesus King definitely had its moments. And even I admit it, it's a massive letdown of an album. There were several verses that were clearly throwaways and songs that felt rushed and sloppily thrown together. And even the mixing was bad and had to be fixed later on. Then there was Donda, despite its incredible highs and I mean absolutely incredible highs. An album rollout maybe being the greatest album rollout ever made. Mac and I even shelled out money to fly to Atlanta to attend LP2 in person. It's easy to forget that the first listening party was a patchwork of an album filled with unfinished verses in absolutely terrible mixing. The end of Donda, it felt like someone who aced a test but just spent the night before studying. Sure it worked out because of his natural ability to make music but honestly it's an unsustainable way to make music. Then the easily forgettable Donda 2 happened. That had a few good moments moments, sure, but even less than Donna 1. And it was him studying for the test last second again, but this time not passing. And honestly proving that it's not a sustainable way to make music. Not even to mention that all the singles at this time have been lackluster, to put it kindly. I mean, who the fuck is listening to hot shit nowadays? Sounds like a lot of... Sounds like a lot... And now we enter the Vultures era. I've been watching all the leaks like a hawk, and I stayed up till the crack of dawn to watch the rave. And like most Kanye listening parties, it was a complete mess. All right, they said, they said we gotta get out of here, so we gonna play this. They turn the speakers off, we gotta go. This is Westy. Showing up late because apparently they couldn't find the ox, then having several unfinished songs with hollow verses. He promoted the song Everybody with the Backstreet Boys sample before the event, only for the song to be pretty hollow outside of the snippet shown. Okay, you the king. Burger King. Kanye did his typical mumbling over some pretty great beats, but very few felt completely finished. And much like Donda, the features were heavy, and frankly, they all delivered, even North. These artists know if they're on a Kanye album, this is a huge moment for their careers, so they gave it all they can. But Kanye just doesn't bring the same energy to his own music. He even played a new body song that had been leaked for years with the same mumbled verses he had the entire time. It's exactly the same. And it's been six years. Not even to mention that Nicki didn't even clear the sample, despite his tweet basically begging her to clear it. That train has left the station. And despite all this negativity I have around this project, I see strong indications that this could be an iconic Kanye album. At this point, it's pretty clear Kanye is bringing somewhat of the same energy that he brought to Donda 1. A stacked feature list full of massive names, really interesting production with a dark, creepy vibe. And just like early Donda 1, Kanye's parts seem unfinished. He's delayed the album over five times, but I think there's more to that than it seems. I don't think it's because he needs more time to finish it. I think he's at a point in his career that most rappers tend to hit, and I think he knows it. We've seen so many artists reach their mid 40s and their music completely drops off a cliff. Kanye is 46 years old. Eminem was 45 when he dropped his worst rated album. And frankly, he hasn't made much great music since. And Andre 3000 said this himself at the age of 48. Sometimes it feels inauthentic for me to rap because I, I don't have anything to talk about in that way. Like I'm 48 years old. So many artists go from leading the culture to losing it completely. We've seen it before. Nobody's immune to losing touch of what's good. Not even Kanye. It's very important for Kanye to remain relevant in culture. As he said in interviews, being successful, being relevant, and selling his music is an integral part for him to be able to the cultural icon he seeks to be. And after losing millions because of recent events, I'm sure he knows, like many times, music is his chance at redemption. But what is it about Vultures that there's indication that he wants to make something great? There's very little about the rave that would tell you that we're in the midst of a possible great out. Firstly, he's pushing back the release date over and over again, which is something he's been known to do. However, even Donda, they stayed until it was done. Jesus King, Life of Pablo, Ye and Kids See Ghosts have all been fixed after release, meaning he, even he missed the deadline slightly. If it was his goal to make the best album ever made on these, he surely would have taken more time. Secondly, he's been quietly going on an apology tour, trying to regain trust in the public and artists, apologizing to the Jewish community several times, one through an Instagram post, and next through a 40 minute long video, and behind closed doors apologizing to Kate Cuddy. He apologized to me, and it was sincere. I was just like, wow, Kanye does not apologize to anyone. He doesn't say sorry to anyone. There's clearly some remorse on his side. 
side, as well as a desire to regain the public's trust. Even if the route to getting relevancy is insincere, it does seem like Kanye cares about being relevant. And the best way for him to remain in cultural relevancy is by making a great album. I guess at this point, we'll just have to wait and see.